With me today on Behind the Bot is Team 11329 Ice Robotics, uh, who just recently won the Chicago Robotics Invitational with a really unique extending deposit design with a double claw, as well as a unique surgical tubing intake and drone design. Learn more about their robot with me on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Studica Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the USA can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. So to start with your drivetrain and any trackers that you use to determine your position during autonomous, could you elaborate more on your drivetrain, what ratio it runs, any odometry you use? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, let Evan. Uh, we use a one-to-one -one ratio, and we use an iLight drivetrain simulation to determine what motors we should have for this robot. Uh, we have a belted drivetrain so that it's light and easily maneuverable on the field. Um, we use cameras and autonomous to line up. Alan, would you like to talk about? We have uh, two uh, Global Shadow RG cams on the front of the robots and as well on the back of the robot. These can look at the April tags at any point during the auto and see exactly where the robot is on the field. During auto, uh, we intake a bunch off the stack. So we have our, what, what we call special intake. They can go up and down at various levels with a plate here so that they don't knock up into the intake. We, this year, we decided that we wanted to intake on one side and then have the pixels flow to the back of the robot where we have this tray that we can access that stores the pixels right here and uh, allows it to come to our claw and extension mechanism. Edward? So this extension mechanism is something new that we added for CRI. So as you can see here, um, we have um, this driven on Mizumi slides and um, the framing is built out of carbon fiber. Um, we have distance sensors on the front of the robot and Alan, if you'll demonstrate. Yeah. yeah. We can use these distance sensors to um, have our slides always be parallel to the backdrop. So pass me the binder. We'll use this binder to simulate um, our tracking, but through this, we're able to always be parallel to the backdrop. Another thing that we added was to first CRI was this claw, and Evan can talk about that. Yeah, so uh, we decided that we wanted an omnidirectional claw uh, for being able to place at any orientation. Here, we can spin in any direction, and we also have a button here that can flip the claw up and down. Uh, we also have an omni joint here, a GoBuilder omni joint that we've drilled into and threaded uh, uh, M4 screw holes here so that when we go to the backdrop, uh, we can go through here and it can bend around and align to the backdrop without us having to be perfectly uh, centered on the backdrop every single time. As we mentioned before, we would like to talk about our drone launcher. So here, our drone launcher is mounted on our climber and this allows us to have variable um, shooting angle. And so what this means is that we can shoot behind both the single trusted CRI and also the double trusted CRI. And this gives us lots of flexibility in endgame where time is especially valuable. Our climber is a jointed climber that is able to, once it goes up, it can deploy. And that's made it so that we only have to fit it into a small area. So here, go to, yep. So we can go up and we have it come back into a position so that it can come onto the truss and hook. And once it's on there, we're good. Uh, made sure to have uh, most of our parts up front here made out of Lexan because it was, it was crucial uh, during our balls matches that everything was not breaking and that we could have the most sustainable robot and not break anything. Uh, 
Um, moving away from the parts of your robot, in order to ensure consistency throughout the teleoperated uh, tele uh, portion of the match, do you have any sensors or anything like that inside your intake or near the claw area to ensure that the pixels don't get jammed or anything like that? Okay, so in our intake, we have two color sensors that we use as distance sensors in the front and the back of our robot. These can sense pixels as while they're coming in and as they set into the claw. This allows us to, whenever we start intaking with the claw, um, whenever we start intaking, it intakes, it intakes until it sees to, it sees a pixel in both of those slots. Oh, yeah, when we, we have the slides to go down so that it creates a funnel type right in front of the claw. So then as soon as it gets to in the intake, it starts outtaking immediately. And we also have a finger in the claw to help write these pixels. If they get uh, if they get set in a wrong pattern, then we have a little finger right there to help set them. So if, for example, if we're like this, our claw can't grab this, but as soon as this spins a few times, it writes it like that. And it does not knock it up. Uh Going further into Teleop, do you have any driver enhancements in your software to ensure that your robot is as efficient as possible? So the main part of it is this is the preset. So as you saw earlier, when we're going to a preset, it does a lot of things. It first has to bring these slides up because the arm cannot move out immediately. And it also has to, has to grab the pixels as well. So what it does is it first goes down all the way, then grabs the pixels and then goes back up. I can show you that here. So you can see it first goes down, picks up pixels, goes out in the extendo and everything. And it waits to do those in the sequential order so it doesn't break anything. Also, when we're going back down, it also has to do them in that reverse order. Finally, do you have any tips or tricks or any other parts of your robot that you want to tell to the viewers to help them with their robots in future seasons? Uh during our off season from last year, we decided we wanted to have a custom base this year that was belted and uh, a fast robot. So we decided to prototype and iterate on just a base uh, during the off season. Having just a, a pretty much something that could drive around helped us a lot with prototypes and a lot of the exchange mechanism on here was prototyped and run on that base. Thank you very much for joining us on Behind the Bot. I hope you have a great rest of your off season if you are participating anywhere else. And um, thank you for joining us again. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Studica Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the USA can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.